I'm Ed Stafford, an ex-British Army captain and an explorer. I'm the only person to walk the entire length of the Amazon River. But now, I'm in the middle of my latest challenge. I'm attempting to survive for 60 days on a tropical island. I can't hide the fact that this is a massive challenge above everything that I've done today. I've been dropped off with no clothes, no food, no water, and no survival tools. Ah. And I'm being watched over by leading survival experts. For Ed to complete this task for 60 days without food, clothes, or any tools, I very much doubt it. I'm completely alone and filming everything myself. What a difference being on your own makes. In 30 days, I've gone from first stage survival basics, like making a fire. Yes! Yes! To a more comfortable existence in my shelter made of palm leaves. Eddie in his shelter. I've kept myself alive by scrambling around for snails, crabs, and geckos. But just staying alive isn't good enough. Now, my plan is to exploit the island and become fully sustainable. Oh my god. I need to prove to myself that I could live here indefinitely. It's stable. Thirty days in, and I'm pushing myself harder than ever before. Yes! I've been left on a remote and uninhabited island in the South Pacific. It lies 300 kilometers east of Fiji and is called Olorua. I've established a daily routine on my island, and it's keeping me alive. There's finding fresh coconuts, collecting scarce and precious drinking water, six and a half liters, and scouring the beach for signs of snails, crabs, and eels. But I want to do better than this. I want a bigger source of food. I'm going to have to kill one of the feral goats that roam the island. They're just coming past me on the beach and they've come up this, this sort of rock face. And this is munching on a, a bit of greenery. I've spotted at least seven feral goats and they've generally kept themselves away from the west of the island where I've got my shelter. And they've gone up to the north of the island. I've spent many frustrating hours watching and stalking them. Just one would provide me with so much more than my basic meals of snail and coconut. Look at the measly portion. Yes, I'm surviving on this, but... All the more reason. Get out there, get a goat. You could be feasting now, Stafford. You could be absolutely feasting. Let's catch this goat. I need to propel something sharp, fast enough so that it penetrates its skin. There's lots of different ways I suppose you could kill a goat. So what I'm going to do is make a bow and arrow. Spear is another obvious one, but I'm not going to go for that, at least not at first. And I think I'm going to make about a four-foot bow. There's a choice of woods on the island for the bow, and I've gone for the most flexible. It's not bad, you know. It's not bad. But for the bowstring, I can't be choosy. Some old rope has been washed up, and I'll be using that. OK, I'm literally just going to tie the string on for the moment and test this bow. It's on top, stays on top, goes underneath. All right, well, very rudimentarily, I've got a bow here. My sister could have thrown that harder. My bow is working just fine. 
Next, I'll need to work on improving my arrows. Got up early this morning, walked around the island, 19 crabs and two full pots of snails. 19 crabs. It's a good day's eating today. It's tough finding the 3,000 calories I need each day. Mainly, I cook up coconuts, snails, eels, and on a good day like today, crabs. Oh, shit. It's bound to happen in the end, but it doesn't mean it's not an absolute disaster. The, my one cooking pot has um, developed a hole in the bottom. Two steps forward, three steps back. I still want to be able to cook, so I'm experimenting with a clamshell as a makeshift pot. Just need it to actually cook the food, though, don't we? I could be waiting a while for this to boil. It's not really working. Unless I can get my fire hotter, thoroughly cooking anything is going to be a real problem. I've got such a bloated belly. What's wrong? What's wrong? Because it's bloating, I've eaten a load of charcoal from the fire. Literally. Literally just picked up charcoal because I remember charcoal tablets are meant to be good for wind, but I mean... It's such discomfort and then... I don't know what's wrong. Excuse me. And things get worse. It's the middle of the night, and I've got a fever and severe stomach cramps. That's an eight or a nine out of ten pain now. Ow! I've got no idea what this pain is, and I'm panicking. a big, big problem in any type of survival situation is if you some, eat something bad or drink something that is bad, that's going to put you on the floor. So there's no reason, for instance, why you couldn't have developed appendicitis or indeed an obstructed bowel. Uh. Using my emergency satellite phone to call for help is the last thing I want to do. But I text a rescue message to the safety crew. They're 40 minutes away by boat. Come on! Ed? Uh, um... Okay, I can see him. Uh, an hour ago, I would have been on, you, on the boat. You started yesterday, you're saying? I, I had a bit of, um, crab. Bit of about five or something. Okay. But I didn't enjoy that at all, and it just churned everything. But, um... After my temperature and pulse are checked, I'm given antibiotics, and once again, I'm on my own. Next, I make a surprise discovery. Oh, my God. I'm sharing my island with the world's biggest land crab. It's the morning after I called in help because of agonizing stomach pains. I've had some antibiotics. I'm rough, but I've still got to push on. I'm not sure whether taking the antibiotics resolved an infection or whether it was simply the fact that he knew that something was being done about it that allowed him to get on. You know the guy's hurting. You probably don't feel like working. You just got to get up and, and push yourself on. It is super hard what he's doing, really, really hard. And he's got a big fight on his hand, you know, just to survive. Not to be comfortable, just to survive. 
ill or not, I can't let daily routines like beachcombing slip. Today, a cooking oil can has been washed up, and I've got plans for it. Using a nail I've salvaged from a piece of driftwood, slowly but surely, I'm able to cut through the metal. And if I get a good bit of big fish or a bit of goat, I've got a good size cooking um, pot. A pot is good, but a knife would be better. And this bit of abandoned outboard engine could be the makings of one. Started going around in a little figure of eight. The volcanic rock is perfect to act as a whetstone to help me sharpen its edge. Because even if I do kill a goat, I could do with a knife just to slit its throat to finish it off. And then obviously to cut it up. So a knife is essential. He's there by himself, no tools, he's having to make things, and he's having to adapt. He's not just sitting back and saying, it's pointless me, you know, even trying to make a tool or um, a bow and arrow. At least he's, he's filling his day in there, which is, which is great, because, he, you know, he is surviving. For the vast majority of our population these days who can't survive without their cell phone, um, it may be a lot more of a challenge. <laughs> This is going to work, and a knife is a very big step forward, isn't it? I'm going to bind this bit first, because I don't want that to split any more at all. I'm using cordage I've made out of hibiscus bark, the same stuff I used to make my skirt and to tie up my shelter. OK, I have a knife. I have a knife with a blade. Pretty cool, isn't it? Jamie Oliver, watch out. Over the last few weeks, one food source I've nurtured has been potato-like taro plants. These are so valuable to me. I can't tell you without them. Well, I would, I would have to be eating broths of just, just snails, or just crabs. I've been growing them in this garden, and each plant has regularly given me several tubers. I've come to rely on them for my long-term source of carbohydrates. It's farming, not just scavenging. I'm going to take out the one that's only got three leaves, and I'm going to leave my magnificent... And you can still am maintaining this vegetable garden. Yeah. Almost feels like sacrilege digging this up. Funny how a plant can end up meaning so much. Funny how food can end up meaning so much. There's one big one. Fingers crossed it has more than one vegetable on it. There's nothing else in here. Don't know what to say. I feel like I've been robbed. Not so much I'm eating. Five potato chips. Not the um not the fat ones you get from the fish and chip shop in England, but the um, ones you get in a packet, literally, five crisps. And that's what I'm back to. I've just been hit quite hard, morale-wise. I didn't need this this morning. I really didn't need this this morning. After six weeks on this tiny island, it can still surprise me. That's ridiculous. Look at this. This is a coconut crab. I've heard about this, but I've never seen one. It's absolutely gigantic. Oh my god. That's a feast. That's a feast. That is the best indicator of a positive change about to happen. This bad boy's gonna die. Coconut crabs are the largest land crabs in the world. They can weigh up to four kilos. Rich in protein, minerals and fat. The meat on this one will give me a third of my daily calorific needs. I'm 
look how big one claw is. Look at the size of the chunk of meat. Half as big as my fist. I can feel my energy coming back already. That lone goat is still up there on its own, bleating. While I have the strength, I'm going to put the finishing touches to my arrows using palm leaves. They fly quite well. Using palm leaves as arrow flights is something I learned from Amazonian tribesmen on my two-year trek. That bird that goes... And my head says, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then, and strip it off. What are you doing? I'm using thin strips of hibiscus bark to secure the flights in place. And now I have flights on the rear of my arrow. And the salvaged nail is lashed onto the other end as an arrowhead. Hopefully, with enough power behind it, that will pierce an answer, a goat. Oh, shit. He scarfed up the hill. First proper hunting thing. My initial arrow flew amazingly and stuck into a tree. Not as good as sticking in the goat, obviously. I'm not giving up on the goats. They're too valuable. Each day on the island, I move closer to sustainability. Today, my plan is to fully harness the precious rainfall using salvaged plastic and bamboo. This morning I'm going to do what I've said I'll do for a long time, which is to put, is to put guttering on the, um, on the back of my house. Yesterday or the day before, I found that black tubing. And so I was just going to use this short length of bamboo. I'm splitting the bamboo with a rock and a clamshell. Use hot metal just to cut straight through the plastic like a knife through butter. Okay, so I've got my um, water collection pot and I've got my two bits of guttering. Most houses use guttering to get rid of rainwater, but I've designed my gutters to harvest every drop. Okay, the guttering's in. <clears throat> All of the water that runs off this bit will then go into this bamboo or into this plastic. It will then just run down and into the bucket at the bottom. Really pleased with that. Really pleased with that. Collecting clean drinking water has been a constant battle. In this heat, I need at least three litres a day to stay fit and healthy. Otherwise, I risk dehydration, resulting in severe headaches, dizziness and heat exhaustion. My new collection system should prevent all of that, and it's not long before it's put to the test. We're collecting water off the whole of that side, all the bamboo, way right down to there. Guttering's working, I don't have to go out into the rain and suck rainwater out of clamshells through straws. It will just collect in the bucket from the roof above my head through my guttering. Good stuff. I'm more in control of my life on the island. But there are things that I can't control or predict. Yeah! OK. There's a goat here. It's got his head tangled in the... Um... It's got his head tangled in the... 
brambles. Oh my god. This is such an opportunity for me. But I need to kill this goat. That's very raw, you know, when you need to kill an animal. I mean, there's joy, but there's no joy of the defeat of the goat. If anything, he wants to put the goat out of its misery. This is food. This is food. Potentially till the end of the project. If I cure it well, it's hide so I can have a covering at night. It's potentially sinew and bone that I can make into fishing cord and fishing hooks. I've got to go, and it isn't a small one. <laughs> yes! Yes! I've got the goat. Now I have to make sure I use every last bit of it. Engrossed with maggots. It's disgusting. finally killed one of the feral goats on the island. It's a massive achievement for me. Weighs an absolute ton. The energy locked into this big animal will boost me to go on building, hunting, and foraging. Tonight, I'm eating goat. I arrived weighing 89 kilograms. After 43 days, I've lost a lot of weight, and I really need this goat meat. But there's so much of it. I'm planning to eat some, and preserve the rest. This knife, it's just as well I've made it, isn't it? This is now absolutely essential. It's hard going. This is one enormous adult male goat, containing a mountain of meat, fat, bone, sinew, and offal. I've got to chop up about 40 kilograms of meat. <laughs> the pressure I'm feeling at the moment is just make sure that I use all of it as possible. I mean, I, I don't like killing for the sake of it, but I'm a meat eater and I firm, firmly believe that if you eat meat, you should be able to kill the animal. It's a prime fillet steaks. <laughs> prime fillet goat steaks. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? What, what matters in life, the simple things, food, so good. It's almost dark, but I have got my uh, goat cut up. I've been hacking, slicing, chopping and filleting for seven hours, and I'm exhausted. First time I sat down, I just caught a goat. I just killed and skinned and quartered a goat. I had four legs, two racks of ribs, two big slabs of meat, all hanging above the fire. Uncooked, this meat will putrefy within hours. I'm eating the internal organs first. They're too good to waste. The heart is a source of iron and zinc, liver, iron and vitamin A, and the kidneys, vitamin B12. And I'm quite happy to eat them. Okay, moment of truth. Don't know where it is. Don't know which bit it is. I'm tired and I'm hungry. I'm gonna enjoy this. I think Ed is um, a lot more resilient in terms of the food and eating things that would normally turn us off than, um, than I was.
I need energy. Nothing can be disgusting right now. I just need this. So, and when you're so hungry, when you're so thirsty, no restaurant can match. That's really good. Not tough at all. Of the fire. Today, I need to um, cure it as best as possible. Over the heat and smoke of the fire, the thin strips of meat will lose all of their moisture. This goat jerky will then last for months. The rest of the goat will need to be cooked in one go. The locals here, they would make an underground oven and they would have a big fire in a shallow pit with stones in it and then they'd put the meat in in whole whole joints, not even wrapped, and then they'd uh, cover it in fresh uh, coconut leaves and then cover it in earth. So I dig a hole, fill it with stones, and let a fire heat them up. That fire's been going for about three and a half hours, maybe four hours now. It's time now to put the legs of meat on it, cover it with the um, coconut leaves, and... Um, and then cover it back with soil. And after another three hours of slow cooking, it's time to take a look. Moment of truth. I'm going to um, uncover the uh, underground oven. Wow. Oh, my God. I think these are incredible. We have success. All four legs are cooked to perfection. <laughs> that is extraordinarily good. I have to say that is better than oven roasted. Oven roasted anything. I never thought I'd be eating this well on the island. Day 45. It's made me re come alive. It's a good day. It's a good day. now since I killed the goat. The, uh, the problem with the legs of meat isn't that um, they might not last five days because they're going to go off. It's that they might not last five days because <laughs> they taste really good. And in the night, <laughs> I keep getting up and eating them. Do you know what? Every single bit of the edible meat is going to be eaten. I think that's really, really cool. Even the parts of the goat I can't eat, I still find a use for. The skin, especially. To soften it, it's already been soaked in the goat's brains. It's got a, a tendency to attract flies like there's no tomorrow. By stretching the hide on a bamboo frame, I can dry it out and clean it up. Do you know what? Fashion aside, this is really warm. As soon as I put it on, my temperature just rocketed. Got myself a warm top. Rather well, sort of Fred Flintstone-esque, isn't it? And I've got goat in my beard. Further down the beach and downwind, I've got a plan for the goat's rotting head and entrails. Engrossed with maggots, it's disgusting. That's how fast things degrade. 
as absolutely minging as it is. The head with the maggots in it might actually prove, prove to be quite useful to me now. The maggots are nutritious and could provide me with my next meal. And they're really warm. I'm going to use them to entice fish into a trap called a rock corral. At the moment, there'll only be little fish that get it, but um, later, bigger fish will come in. I'm really, really hoping that by building a wall at that end, let's see if we can trap some bigger fish. A rock corral exploits the tides. The idea is the fish come in with the tide, and then, as the tide goes back out again, some fish will get trapped behind the rock wall. It's low tide, and I'm back to see if my corral has worked. There is one fish slightly bigger in there. It's a big enough fish to eat, that's for sure. More than 35 snails worth of fish. I've moved that big rock that it was hiding behind. It's gone up that end. That's good. That end is fine by me. Got him! Hey, a fish. Fish for lunch! <laughs> that just proves that these methods do work if you persevere. damming a lot of potential rock pools. Got a method of fishing that works, which means that life on the island most definitely becomes more sustainable. I know now I can catch small fish, but to live here indefinitely, I want to explore out towards the reef, where fish should be much bigger. I think this is where I'm going to build the raft. I'll stick with a conventional raft design. Five poles in parallel. Biggest, longest one in the middle. And then have crossbars to lash it to make sure that it's um, secure and safe. I've got my beach hibiscus now. Pacific Islanders have made bamboo rafts like this for generations. They're surprisingly buoyant and stable. Add those floats, maximum buoyancy. Got myself a raft. That construction's solid. I'm really happy with that. Not bad for six hours' work. My raft is ready to go, but I'm not sure that I am. 50 days in, and I'm in harmony with the island. It's everything offshore that worries me. What I probably don't want to do is get myself on a on a small raft anywhere near those big breaking waves at the back. And outside the reef, there's uh, bull sharks, tiger sharks, all sorts of sharks. Getting out into the water, there's a, a great source of food, i.e. the fish and everything else. But what you've got to remember is you're not number one on the food chain. His safest option is to stay on land and establish himself there. And to make things worse, I keep sighting sharks in the lagoon. There's some really big fish in there. Really big old fish. It's the morning that I'm going to launch the raft. Can't really tell how much I slept last night. I was quite aware that I needed to wake up early. It's time to face my fear of the ocean. But I won't do it on an empty stomach. Not a lot of this goat jerky left. But what is amazing is when you heat it up, the fat cooks and it crackles like pork crackling. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. I think today 51 is the last day of last day of eating goat in any form. It's windy today. And it's quite choppy, actually, and I just need to take it really, really easy. Just get used to it. The, the waves are huge that are crashing in. What's going through my mind, fears, apprehensions are capsizing, sharks, um, getting swept in the wrong direction, not being able to control the raft. Quite a lot of, quite a lot of apprehensions going through my head, actually.
In a survival situation, you never take unnecessary risks. I'm not trying to leave the island. I'm scouting the reef for potential fishing sites. with me on it. Feels quite stable. Grass is nice and buoyant. It's very windy today. I'm not actually sure how much control I'm going to have. Huge, huge currents pushing through here. And then wide sweeping strokes just try and turn around. On this side, and it just isn't working. No, you're gonna have to get off here. I need to get back to the safety of the shore. I was getting swept and getting pulled further out and out, and I can hardly hold the, hold the boat in. That was hard. But my goodness, it is not manoeuvrable. Um, certainly these winds, certainly this tide, I cannot go out in the rough, certainly not to the edge of the reef, which is what I wanted to do to look for fish. But again, that's a lesson learned, isn't it? Back on the safety of my island, I realize just how far I've come. I'm feeling positive, motivated, and physically strong. 19, yes! I'm well beyond the survival stage and have the energy and time to improve my home. That's it, bed in place, job done. Let's have a little go. I'm off the floor. <sighs> I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight. <sighs> this is what you call a tease. There's a mango tree. But the mangoes aren't ripe yet. Mm -hmm. I'm happily put up with stomachache. It just, the smell smells like ripe mango. The taste doesn't taste like ripe mango at all. <laughs> it tastes like an unripe green hard fruit. But a mango is rich in fiber, antioxidants, and minerals such as potassium, copper, and vitamin C. But it does help if the mango is ripe. Well, it's probably gonna happen eventually. My, uh, my denture is just broken. Oh well, gap tooth for the last three days. Who cares? Vitamin C. I'm eating so well at the moment. I've got two crabs for lunch, um, 35 snails, um, taro leaf to add vitamin C. I've just had mango, and it's just, again, making me smile. That, okay, yeah, today I've not got goat, today I've not got fish, but I'm eating so well that the, um, that it doesn't matter at all. I am living a very sustainable, very happy, very content life. And, and I've just done my exercises, but at the end of week eight, I'm stronger than I've ever been on this island. I've done it. Morning. 
It's day 60. <laughs> it's day 60. We're going home. We're going home. Time to rejoin the human race. Farewell to Olorua. I feel like I'm just going to explode in excitement. So excited about seeing people again. Having a conversation. Eating food, let's not beat around the bush. Say goodbye to my home. I've been very comfortable, very content in that shelter. Cheerio. This is my little island. Walk the Amazon, I've survived 60 days on an island. This has been a phenomenal experience, one that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. It takes a certain type of person to want to walk, walk the length of the Amazon. So within that psyche, they should, they should have what it takes. It's so beautiful when you know that you're okay, that you can trust yourself. Yeah, it's, it's, it says it, it's so rewarding when a plan works. That is the sound not of a boat, but of a helicopter. Is the wind playing tricks on me? No. My God. That's pretty cool. Getting off the island. Oh, yes! All good things come to an end, don't they? It's time to go. I'm out of here. I am out of here. so long ago that I arrived naked and with nothing. I totally underestimated how hard it would be. Uh, uh, Living like a caveman, I made fire. Yes! 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 I evolved, making myself comfortable. Eddie in his shelter. And finally, I did more than just survive. Fish for lunch! I thrived. I conquered the island. And I proved I could live there indefinitely.